Hey, what up everyone, Komodo here. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys the new wavetable synth in Ableton 10. This thing's really cool. I haven't had a chance to use it too much, but I do know it pretty well. So in this video, I'm not gonna show you guys how to make presets and sounds so much as I'm gonna show you under the hood how this thing works, all the parameters you need to know if you don't already. It's more of like a beginner's guide to how to use the synth, how the synth works, what it is. Um, so we got a lot to cover. Without further ado, let's get going. So Wavetable is Ableton's new Wavetable synth. A couple popular Wavetable synths you might know might be Native Instruments Massive or Expert's Serum. It's a really cool type of synthesis where instead of having to create these really complex sounds, you simply scroll through what is called a Wavetable and this changes the sound and timbre of what's coming out of your speakers and it has and usually these synths come with these really complex ones, so you yourself don't have to design these complex sounds. You're essentially just scrolling through complex sounds and using that as the basis for your synthesis. It's a really cool, popular style of synthesis. It's really good for things like dubstep, feature bass, really anything, because you can do so much with it. You can keep things basic, you can get really complex. And I think Ableton's Wavetable actually packs a lot of punch. You can't design wavetables like in Serum, for example. However, it comes with a lot of really nice one, and I'm hoping in future updates, they might even introduce more wavetables. So when you first pop open Wavetable, it's pretty well designed and pretty well organized. Everything's actually in these little windows and tabs. You have lots of different views in here. But what I actually like to do right off the bat, and what I'm gonna do for this tutorial to make things a lot easier, is if you click the little arrow in the top left corner here, you pop open the envelopes, LFOs, and the wavetables up top. And at the bottom, you leave just the routing and the filtering, which makes things a lot more straightforward. So up top, you have three different oscillators. You have oscillator one, oscillator two, and a separate sub oscillator so you can introduce sub into the sound and beef up your sounds overall. What's really nice too is the sub doesn't go through the unison settings later on so it doesn't get spread and detuned. It keeps it nice and thick and down the middle. So starting with oscillator one here, you can turn on the oscillators with these little power buttons and they each have their own individual panning right below that as well as a volume for each of the individual oscillators. Pretty straightforward. Right now we have a default sine wave. And where you can first change that is this drop down menu. So, this drop down menu is where you're going to pick the overall category of wavetable. And then the second drop down menu is going to be which wavetable you're picking. So, for example, I'm going to pick something like a complex wavetable. In here, I'm going to pick something cool like, I don't know, ripped sync. That sounds awesome. And then I'm going to head on over to the right for this scroll right this scrolling bar right here and this scrolls through the wavetable position if i get into a bit of a nicer octave down below you can hear you get these really complex sounds without having to actually do any type of synthesis that's what's so cool about this so oscillator 2 is pretty much just a copy of that we don't really need to go into too much detail about it right now you actually have a visual switch for the wavetable position. So you get this really interesting one here. This kind of cool ring, or if you click this, you get the nice 3D view like that, which is really cool. Uh, to the left of the wavetable position slider, you have a detune in sense, so you can slightly detune these, or a pitch in semitones. It's gonna be really handy. Now where you can make this sound even more complex is the drop down menu here where you have essentially these, what, what Ableton likes to call it is effect types. And these effects are going to change the shape uh, of the existing wavetable. So if I pick something like FM, you actually introduce FM synthesis into that existing wavetable. And you can also set the tuning of that. which is gonna to yield totally different FM results. You also have classic where you get essentially a pulse width option. Notice I can drag all these in positive and negative directions, uh, percents. And then you have sync. That one only goes in a positive direction. You also have modern, which has what's called warp modes which is similar to the bend modes you see in something like Serum or uh, Massive. 
and you have a fold option which kind of looks like a combination of sync and mirror and a bunch of cool ones from Serum. So it's really cool, it's really useful. The sub oscillator, you just power it on, it's got its own volume, tone, which is gonna introduce harmonics, the octave it's in, and you can actually separately transpose it, which is pretty cool. So that's really it, it's pretty basic for the oscillators, very easy to use, but again, you really quickly get these complex sounds just by scrolling through them. It's really dope, I love it, it's awesome. It's a really quick and easy thing to use. So down below that you have the three different envelopes. The first one by default is your amp. So the ADSR, the overall amplitude of your sound. Straightforward, if you don't know anything about envelopes, you should go check out another video, look up ADSR, look up envelopes. You can change the slope of it as well, the curve of the envelopes in here in the slope view, or you can just click and drag them manually. Now to the right you have envelope two and three which aren't assigned to anything by default. These are gonna get assigned to the different parameters inside of Wavetable to move them over time. And how you assign it, and I'm kind of jumping ahead here, is if you drop down below, you get the mod matrix. Now the mod matrix is really cool because it kind of is an old school way of mapping things inside of VSTs and synths. And what you can do is simply pick some sort of parameter that you want to apply the envelope to. So for example, if we want the wavetable position to be moved by envelope two, all I do is I click it. It appeared here if it didn't exist in the mod matrix and I click and drag either a positive or negative direction if I want the envelope to move that in a positive or negative direction. So now when I hold down a note, this envelope is moving that. So this envelope's now assigned to that. What if I also wanted it to be assigned to the warp mode? Well, all I would do, bam, click the warp mode, follow the mod matrix, so warp to the envelope, click drag. So now this warp mode is being affected by the envelope as well in a positive direction. All the mapping inside of Wavetable is gonna be that easy. We're gonna get back to the matrix as we go along, but it's that simple. So now to the right, we have LFOs, which are gonna add some sort of constant movement into the sound. So if, for example, I wanted this to modulate the volume of our, comp of our oscillator one, all we're gonna simply do is set a right here. Now, if you want it to synchronize to your song, you click the little musical note. So now we have an eighth note. I'm gonna set the amount, so the amount is how much it's actually gonna be. The amount is how dynamic the LFO is. You can change the shape to a more hard shape, or they have this cool new inverted one. They didn't previously have this existing for options inside of Ableton, which is really cool. I'm actually gonna assign that, it's kinda of neat. Um, and then you can obviously offset where it starts in its phase. And then again, super simple. You head to the matrix, you decide what you wanna assign it to. So I'm gonna assign it to oscillator one gain, that appeared as the most recent part of our mod, uh, mod matrix. I positively drag it, so it's only gonna be moving it up and down here. So actually what I wanna do is I wanna negatively drag it. So it's gonna be turning the volume down. And you hear that now we're hearing that volume modulation. So I also wanna turn up this synth right now because you guys might not be able to hear too well. So jumping head, volume's just in the top right here, right here, boom. So we have a nice sounding synth there. LFO2 is just a copy of it. It's just another way to modulate parameters. So down here we haven't looked at yet is the filter section. The filter section has two awesome filters. You simply turn them on drop down menu to pick between them. You have Ableton's really cool morph filter as well. And when you select that in the bottom left, you have an option to morph it here. You can move the filter cutoff for each individual LFO here, as well as add a nice resonant spike. You can pick how steep the slope is with the 12 or 24 decibel steepness there. And you can pick the type of filter based off the analog modeling filters that were introduced in nine right here. You have a second filter which can be turned on and used in combination here. So you can do that, you can have both of them going. 
And then you have different routing options here for the filters. Are they running in serial, parallel, or split? This is really cool because you can choose how the sounds are actually going into the filters and how the filters are going into each other. And you can set that there, which is really cool. And again, you can now take anything we've been using previously and you can map it to whatever you want. So I want the morph to actually be affected by envelope two. So I'm gonna assign that in a positive direction. And I also want its filter cutoff to be assigned. So now that's doing that. I'm going to take off the volume automation we had previously going from the LFO. I don't really like it now in this context. So I'm gonna actually right click it. I'm gonna return it to default. See, it doesn't exist anymore. And I'm actually going to apply envelope two to that again. So now we get this one movement all together. Sounding cool, I like it. So at the bottom here in the matrix tab, the only thing we really haven't looked at is you have a time, which is gonna set the overall time of everything. So you can actually speed up. You can actually slow down your sound all at once or speed everything up all at once. So it's kind of just a cool way of either speeding up all the modulation or slowing down all the modulation in one go. Really cool. Uh, you have an amount of modulation here, so you can actually just turn down the global amount of modulation and just turns everything down right there. Volume, which we already looked at. Uh, you have an option to make your sound polyphonic or monophonic here. And if it's monophonic, you're gonna have the ability to make your sound glide. So when I play multiple notes there, it glides between them instead of being a quick jump. Or if it's polyphonic, you can pick how many voices are right there in that drop down menu. Now it's really cool and new to Ableton is you have unison options here, but the unison, unison options have different modes and these different modes are gonna have different sounds and characteristics. So you, once you pick one, you set the amount of unison, the amount of voices. Here you get this really cool chorusy effect. And then each type is gonna have a totally different characteristic. So, so I recommend for each sound you just test it out and play with the different unison modes. And that's it. Like literally, that's it. I know Wavetable looks really com complicated, but it's not. When you open up the drop down menu right here to just lay everything's, everything out really clean, it's so clean and easy to use. It's literally just oscillators up top modulation right below it, filters in the bottom left, routing in the middle, and then just your master global parameters on the right. That is it. It's awesome. Easy to use, just like that, Ableton's new wavetable synth. I have nothing else to say. We can go. It's over. Tutorial's over. Peace out. It's done. That's it. Thanks, guys. Peace. <laughs>